Warren, your, your approach seems so simple. Why doesn't everybody do it? Well, I think partly because it is so simple. Uh... While everyone knows that Warren Buffett famously holds investments for the long term, and some indefinitely, have you ever asked yourself why that is? And no, it's not just because the companies in question are built to last. Like a skyscraper that gets taller and taller with each floor, Warren Buffett held stocks for decades to allow the power of compounding to work its magic. In the world of finance, small investments can lead to ridiculous impractical numbers. And that's why about 99% of his wealth was created after his 50th birthday. But if he can do it, why can't we? Ladies and gentlemen, keep your eyes peeled because in today's video, we're going to unveil three compounding methods that can turbocharge your returns, each with its unique potency. But here's a big spoiler. One of these compounding strategies could skyrocket your portfolio by over 100 times, potentially injecting over a million dollars into your pockets. But you might want to grab a pen and paper because apart from the aforementioned, we're also going to discuss the biggest red flags that investors ignore that keep their investments in a bind, no matter how long they spend compounding and so much more. But before we do that, if you want to boost your portfolio's return on investment significantly, one of the best ways to do this is to invest in companies with a high return on invested capital, or ROIC. Why? Well, it's easy. These firms typically reinvest their cash flow effectively and also demonstrate a strong ability to generate more value from their capital. And make no mistake, ROIC is the best way to measure how efficiently a company can multiply its resources, just like how many oranges a tree can produce from just one seed. But allow us to paint a bigger picture here. If a company borrows money from a bank at an interest rate of 7%, the cost of that capital is going to be 7%, right? Now let us assume that the same company was able to generate a return of 10% on that borrowed capital. That 3% difference represents the return on invested capital. And guys, the higher the ROIC, the more cash the company is pumping in. So, when they reinvest their cash flow at a high ROIC, it only means they are using their greens to grow their business and, of course, make more profits. So, can you see why ROICs are so important? They not only demonstrate a company's operational efficiency, but also its capacity to deliver appealing returns to shareholders. But how do we find stocks that have a high return on invested capital? One strategy that never seems to fail is seeking companies that have substantial growth in both revenue and gross profit, because they both serve as indicators of a company's market performance and the value it provides to customers. That said, have you ever wondered why Warren Buffett keeps generating billions every year from his investments alone? It's not about looking at the charts and spending countless hours trying to predict what the next groundbreaking opportunity is. He makes so much money from just passively buying a stock and watching his money compound year after year, and that's why he keeps saying this. But you shouldn't buy stocks unless you expect to hold them for a very extended period and you are prepared financially and psychologically to hold them the same way you would hold a farm and never look at a quote. So, if we want to win like Warren Buffett, why shouldn't we be taking a leaf out of his book to analyze why he is so successful? If you only took a glance at his portfolio, you will see top firms like Apple, HP, Coca-Cola, American Express, and Bank of America, all of which have something amazing in common. They all have a really good return on invested capital, which indicates efficient use of cash flow for value creation and business growth. For instance, let's take a look at Apple, the technology giant and the number one holding of Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. On November 2nd, Apple released its fiscal year 2023 fourth quarter results, showing a 3% growth in sales compared to the same quarter last year. And guess what? This growth was driven by record-breaking iPhone sales for the fourth quarter and an all-time high in service sales. The iPhone segment contributed 49% to the total sales, while service sales accounted for 25% of overall sales. Earnings per share increased by 13% surpassing analyst consensus. It is also important to add that Apple has only missed analyst estimates once in the past 20 quarters. We guess that's why Warren Buffett never shies away from praising Apple and how the entire company is run. And if you weren't impressed by that, check out how these numbers are further reflected in key investment parameters, 
such as dividend growth and, most importantly, share price growth. Apple has 56.27% ROIC and a current dividend yield of 0.52%, supported by a 10-year dividend growth rate of 6.6% and an average annual share price that averages 4.3%. But let's make a practical example using a smart, imaginary investor called Caleb. Now, if Caleb invests $10,000 in Apple stock at the end of the first year, his portfolio could be valued at $15,627. And guess what? It gets even crazier when he starts to compound. In only five years, he will have made around $40,000. But please... Do not make the mistake of mindlessly adding a company to your investment list just because they have a pretty high ROIC. If you do so, you might just be shooting yourself in the foot. So to prevent that, always check if the company you want to invest in is buying other companies, a term commonly described as acquisition. Not a lot of people know this, but certain companies engage in acquisitions to safeguard or enhance their growth. While that's great and all, the truth is that the outcomes of such actions vary, and not all acquisitions are beneficial. If a company relies heavily on acquisitions for protection, it could suggest challenges in achieving independent growth, potentially affecting the pace of your investment returns. And that's why it's always better if a company has good profits to make money and grow. But moving on, here's an additional tip. Always be cautious if a company prioritizes avoiding losses over gaining market victories. Defensive strategies have their limits, and it's the bold, aggressive moves that often yield significant rewards in the market. Now, the next way of compounding your portfolio fast is by adding companies that use their cash flow for buybacks. This is a pretty neat financial strategy used by some companies to reduce the number of shares in the market by buying them back. Because you see, when a company engages in share buybacks, it reduces the number of shares available making each remaining share more valuable. This strategy signals the company's belief that its shares are undervalued, potentially increasing the value of your shares over time as profits are divided among fewer shares, leading to a larger share of the profit for shareholders. As an illustration, if a company has 1 million shares outstanding, earns $3 per share, and trades at $90 per share, its price-to-earnings ratio is 30. Because when the price share of $3 gets multiplied by 30, that will give us a value of $90. But now, if the company buys back its shares, say half of them, its earnings per share will double to $6. And if the market maintains the same valuation at 30 times earning, the stock price should rise to approximately $180, leading to substantial capital gains for investors. However, it's worth adding that if you choose to stay invested in a stock with significant buybacks, you have to constantly keep an eye out to evaluate the company's overall financial health because a decrease in earnings might eventually affect the value of shares. And moreover, it's also crucial to analyze stock buybacks in relation to the cash flow generated by the company's operations. That said, while a couple of amazing companies have some sweet buybacks, one company that we can't seem to take our eyes off is MasterCard yet another firm that Warren Buffett keeps his eyes on. With a market cap of $395.6 billion, MasterCard is a leading global payment solutions company that provides an array of services in support of debit, credit, mobile, web-based, and contactless payments, plus other related electronic payment programs to financial institutions and other entities. Over the past 12 months, MasterCard has had a buyback yield of 2.4%, which is a good signal that shows that, one, they are making an active effort to repurchase its shares, and secondly, that MasterCard has a lot of confidence in the undervaluation of its stock, two of the biggest reasons that suggest your investment would be more than just fruitful. And if you're still skeptical, did you know that MasterCard stock gained up to 19.1% over the past year, outperforming the industry's 18.5% growth? That alone made the company stand head and shoulders above everyone in the industry. And the best part is, there is still more room to grow. Because while the company has consistently generated positive cash flow from operations, allowing it to conduct share buybacks and distribute dividends, 
It also generated cash flows from operations of $7.9 billion in the first nine months of 2023. And guess what? It also bought back 4.8 million shares for $1.9 billion, while paying out dividends worth $538 million in the third quarter alone. And the icing on the cake is that last month it approved a 16% hike in the quarterly cash dividend and added $11 billion to its share buyback fund. Can you see why companies with high buybacks are good for your portfolio? It's an amazing option that works like a charm. But alas, in your search for this kind of company to add to your portfolio, you need to be wary of companies that pay down debt aggressively. On one hand, debt can be a valuable tool for financing growth and creating value. For instance, when a company borrows money at a low interest rate and invests it in a project with a high return on invested capital, it has the potential to increase its earnings and overall value. But sometimes it can be a double-edged sword. Some companies pay down debt too aggressively, even when it's not necessary. And more often than not, this only means that the company is using its cash flow to reduce its liabilities, instead of increasing its assets. So, instead of including companies that pay down debt too aggressively on your portfolio, you should try to get at least one that has good debt management and high interest coverage. These companies can balance their debt and equity and use their cash flow to invest in profitable projects that can compound their portfolio quickly. Now, if Caleb is looking for good buyback stocks and finds MasterCard to be a good choice like Warren Buffett, he invests $10,000 into the company, intending to hold it for 30 years for capital appreciation. Right now, the stock has a current dividend yield of 0.62% backed by a strong average annual share price increase of 16.3% over the past 12 months, thanks to consistent share buybacks. Based on these metrics, if Caleb invests $10,000 in this stock with a strong buyback strategy after just one year, his initial investment would be worth up to $10,062. Fast forward 10 years, and that same portfolio would shoot up to $28,393. And of course, by the rule of compounding, things can only get better. After 30 years, Caleb's portfolio would have expanded to an impressive $245,206, which we can all agree is an amazing return of investment compared to his $10,000 capital. Next, let's explore the final strategy to compound your portfolio, which involves identifying companies that utilize their cash flow to pay dividends as it can help you earn more money without having to sell your shares. And guess what? If you want to make things work even faster and compound your portfolio quickly, you can increase your number of shares and dividend income over time by using your dividends to either buy more shares of the same company or invest in others. To bootstrap this, let's use MasterCard's biggest competitor, Visa. Given its current 8% dividend yield, the robust average dividend growth rate of 18.33% and annual share price appreciation of 16.8%, Caleb could see his $10,000 investment in this stock grow to $11,760 after just one year. Over a decade, his investment would have grown fivefold to $50,900. In 20 years, he will have over $263,600. After 30 years, he will be a millionaire thanks to his impressive sum of $1,393,000. And if this demonstration doesn't show you the power of compounding, what will?